Pearden here from Tree Incarnation. Um, on this show, what it is you're going to be hearing about is a little bit about what Tree Incarnation fundamentally stands for, how you can motivate your team, um, and a little bit on leadership and um, some philosophical kind of um, mindsets as well. Uh, tune in. Also, check out Prosper's other episodes. They are damn good. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the All Life Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the founder of Tree Incarnation himself, Nick. Nick, how are you doing, my man? Good, man. Good to be here. Absolutely. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this part of the show right now, you're probably sitting on a desk or on a chair that is made of some sort of wood. Now, Nick and Tim have created what is called Tree Incarnation which is Australia's only tree removal company that makes furniture from the trees that are being cut down. Now, we're going to be asking him a few questions as to what, he, what are his motivations and how he's actually going about this social entrepreneurship. You know, the reason why we do this is because we want to help you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. In um, Nick's business, he comes across a lot of adversities when it comes to really conscientizing the public um you know of the usefulness of what trees can be um you know for us in our environment and also as pieces of furniture that you're actually sitting on there so nick i could go on and on about the stuff that you uh pulling at tree incarnation tell us a little bit about your story and how you actually got started mate Sure. Well, um, before we, I suppose, did the rebrand to Tree Incarnation and then we had the vision to, um, you know, minimise waste across the board and to somewhat inspire the industry to do the same, we were just like everybody else um, in the sense that, you know, we were just a stock standard tree removal company. And um, I suppose the tipping point was uh, really just out of, um, I don't know, a bit of boredom in the business. I like personally... I got to a point where I just wasn't fulfilled with doing, you know, the, the norm and just abiding by the status quo in the industry. And, um, yeah, I, after having a bit of a discussion with my team, we, um, I suppose, uh, at the end of that discussion, what we concluded, um, it'd be best to yeah, shake shit up a bit and, and um, do something to you know, combat the, uh, the waste that's uh, pretty rough across the industry at the moment. Absolutely. So, obviously, your, um, you know, your job as a... As a as a tree pruder, is, it, is that how you started? Uh, yeah, yeah, not how I started my business, but in this business, yeah, like this one isn't my first. Um, but yeah, that's how I started out in this game, totally. Yeah, and then um, three years in thereabouts, um, yeah, decided to make a shift and, and become more of a social enterprise. Absolutely. So obviously, as we all know, that forests are being cut down every single day to either make paper or furniture that you know that's already being um, removed from its natural sort of environment and it's being and some of that forest is being cut up as firewood and is being disposed as mulch what's so wrong about keeping ourselves warm or creating gardens that can feed us um well i think the biggest thing that's wrong about it is that there's nothing wrong with the trees not all the time but a lot of the time uh, that we're removing. I mean, I mean, I'm not advocating let's cry over spilt milk. I mean, I'm just sort of um, what it is. You know, we're here to do is to um, to make the most of the timber that um, is you know available for upcycling. And um, yeah, more than anything, we just think, well, you know, if a small company like us can do it, why isn't it stock standard across the board? And why aren't you know the bigger players, if not all of the players, being proactive about um, yeah upcycling as much of the timber as practically possible? Okay, so when, when, when a tree is just chopped down or reduced to firewood or, um, you know, mulch, that's really a lot of waste. What are the uses of, you know, of trees that can be, you know, upcycled or taken advantage of, um, you know, if, if we are consciously reducing that waste and reincarnating the trees that we're chop, chopping down? Good question. Yeah, at this stage, pretty much all that really can be done is uh, for the timber to be upcycled into furniture. That's pretty much its highest use um, once it is that we get our hands on the lumber as such. Moving forward, I mean, there's plenty of opportunities for, as such, you know, um, plenty of opportunities for, you know, for bigger trees and that sort of stuff and higher volumes of timber. Um, there's plenty of more opportunities for this timber to be used as building materials and um, all sorts of stuff. But, um, you know, 
the opportunities are really endless. Like, um, you know, there's uh, not that we, you know, have really looked into this opportunity much at all, um, but it's even feasible to um, power homes and that sort of stuff using mulch. So, um, you know, it, I, I don't, I've, I've got no idea when that's going to be some sort of a, you know, even a, a reality moving forward, but um, it's, yeah, potentially could be on the cards moving forward. But yeah, at this stage, furniture and building materials later on down the track as well is pretty much what's feasible at the moment. Uh, Absolutely. So your job and your business um, was founded in the protest of the industry's sort of way of doing things. Can you just walk us through, just in case some people don't actually know that what's being done is actually wrong for the environment or for the tree? Sure. Well, um, as arborists, we um, and you know, at Tree Incarnation, predominantly we work for the domestic market. So, you know, we're not advocates of uh, you know removing trees unless necessary. But when it comes time for you know a tree to be removed, you know, like I said before, we're not advocates of um, you know crying over spilt milk. But what we are advocates of is using as much as the timber um, for you know what they can, what it can be used um, as practically possible. So, you know. In a common situation, you know, a tree might be um, right next to a house. It might be, um, you know, significant in size, and it might be doing structural damage or causing structural damage to the, you know, the footings or the foundation of the house, for instance. Um, you know, and thus it would need removing. Um, it could be dead or dying. It um, could be, you know, beyond repair. So it could be, um, you know, in such a state where pruning methods and that sort of stuff um, wouldn't exactly suffice to you know, deem the tree safe. So in those sort of circumstances, yeah, we remove the trees as well. Absolutely. So one of your visions is to minimize waste across the board and to actually inspire the, you know, other industry leading professionals to do the same. How are you um, planning to do this or how is that coming together so far? Good question. Look, how it's coming so far is that we've identified a few other people, um, not only just in Melbourne, but uh, across the country who are somewhat following in our footsteps. They've, they've definitely got the intention and they've recognized the value in what it is that we do. Um, and they're somewhat, yeah, following in a similar suit. So, um, you know, whether they're competing with us or not, it doesn't really matter because, you know, so far as, you know, what we see, if they've got a similar vision, we're more than happy to help them. And um, the better that they do, well, the better that, you know, the, um, the we do in a sense because that's what we're trying to achieve. Um, so I think fundamentally at the end of the day, how it's going to change the industry overall is if, um, you know, the awareness of the business owners, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, as soon as the business owners become aware that it's more profitable to uh, recycle the trees than typically cut it up into fold or turn it into mulch, well, it's, uh, it's only a matter of time and it's not going to be all that much time um, before it's all turned into, um, you know, before the status quo has changed. Absolutely. So with the things that you um, manufacture from the trees, what, what happens to them? So what, as soon as we cut the tree down, what happens then? No, the products that you manufacture from the, from the timber that you'd have yeah. salvaged from a job? Yeah, good question. So it really is quite circumstantial. So it depends on the tree. So for instance, um, one big determinant is if we can get the log out in one go from the site. Um, in a domestic environment, I'm sure you, you know, you'd probably be aware that uh, it's quite a you know, confined situation. It's quite a confined, um, I suppose, space in which the tree's located. So there's all sorts of issues um, in every single different case with how to get that timber out from you know off site and then on to or to a milling yard or, or um, you know to some sort of a location where it can be processed um, where we can't get a log out in one go you know with the use of a crane truck or something then uh, we would use something like a, um, a portable mill we might mill it on site um, having said that that is really like the first i suppose stage that largely determines what can be made um, um, but having said that, at the end of the day, largely it's turned into yeah, coffee tables, dining tables, um, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and even really, really cool stools. So, our most famous product at the moment is a stool. I've actually got a number of them here in this room, but they're a bit heavy, so I might only left them for the, for the camera. Um, the stools are really, really cool. What they're really, really good for is um, the fact that their turnaround time, so, you know, from a live tree to finished product is around about a month, you know, if need be. Um, the cool thing about that is that there's no joinery in the, uh, the design at all. So, you know, when um, it cracks and splits, which green timber does, it doesn't affect the functionality of the product, which is really, really cool. Absolutely. So you obviously have a team that you're working with. How do you keep them motivated? I mean, 
this obviously is a job for them at the end of the day, but really uh, following through with uh, making sure that all the trees are, you know, reused or upscaled is a matter of passion. What is it that makes your team different? Good question. Well, it's not as it really a question of me motivating them. If they're not motivated in the first place, well, what the hell are they doing here? I mean, um, it's not hard to be passionate in this business uh, from the forefront. Um, and not only that, like we don't just sort of, when we're recruiting, we don't just chuck an ad up on Seek saying, you know, uh, I bought a cultural company looking for a such and such. Um, we really and genuinely do uh, recruit based off our vision, um, what is it we're trying to achieve, um, and somewhat of our values, who, who it is that we expect our, you know, each individual, um, each of our employees um, to show up as each and every day. So we bring them on board and, you know, when we're recruiting candidates as such, we're very transparent with them. It's like, look, it's not easy work. People don't work here and stay to work here because of the pay. Like we pay reasonable, but you know, it's not the best. Um, and people stay ultimately at the end of the day because of what it is that we're trying to achieve. Absolutely. And as a business that has, you know, helped you stand shoulder, head and shoulders above your competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Absolutely. Now some businesses would be looking at what you're doing and thinking, maybe there's not too much um, adversity that you're facing in your line of work. Is there something that would, uh, you know, be a cog in, in the wheel of you performing your tasks or? I suppose what, speaking logistically of what it is that we do, like when we're removing trees and trying to make them into furniture and things like that? Well, if your business is a standalone business, do you need other people around you in order to make it happen or is there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, good question. Yeah, we do. Um, having said that, like, I haven't met anyone who's not an advocate of what we're trying to do. So, you know, based on that, it's really not hard to find people even, you know, um, in similar sort of industries um, to resonate with what we're trying to achieve. So, you know, we don't uh, look for contractors um, or third party businesses who, you know, uh, when we get them to do something that we're not so good at. Um, you know, but what is it we look for is um, if they yeah, really resonate first and foremost with what it is that we're trying to achieve. Um, and what I've found in my experience is that it's, it's not hard to, to find people out there who, who really want to give us a good crack. Absolutely. So what sort of areas are you prevalently working in um, with your business, Tree Incarnation? Uh, at the moment, growing it more than anything, like um, we're, you know, somewhat still a bit of a small company. Um, there's yeah, really only a handful of employees. Um, and for this idea to really take off um, requires a large volume of timber. And, you know, as a result of that, you know, there's what comes with that is economies of scale. So it's a lot more feasible for, you know, rather than us sort of, uh, you know, employ a crane truck operator or something, you know, just like one day a week or whatever, we're going to have a full-time uh, crane truck operator and, you know, own the equipment ourselves. So we're a lot more efficient in removing the trees and upcycling the furniture, so to speak. Absolutely. Now, if somebody is watching this and has sort of, um, you know, bought into your idea, what's the best way that they can uh, get in touch with you there, Nick? It's not hard to get in touch. Uh, send me an email, give me a call. Um, either one, yeah, I'd be happy for uh, anyone to reach out. And even anyone um, who's in business themselves and who, you know, has some sort of a mentality as to, um, you know, thinking that they could be doing things a little bit better in their business, whether it's, you know, tree related or not, doesn't matter. Um, I'd be even happy to hear from people who uh, think, you know, we could be doing a little bit more good socially in our business. So, um, yeah, if, if there's any listeners out there, by all means, um, I'd be more than happy to, to do what I can to help them to, to do more for their industry. Absolutely. So now this is sort of the beginning of the year. A lot of people are starting fresh or they're revamping their strategies and things like that. What sort of advice can you give to people that are, um, you know, in the social enterprise? price sort of side of things to keep their teams motivated and moving towards the same goal as you have managed to do with your team there? Good question. I think not only just in social entrepreneurship, but in businesses altogether, I think there's a big, um, not a big, but there's some sort of a, definitely a lacking in leadership. And I, I think um, there's a lot of fluff out there. There's a lot of buzzwords and there's a lot of, I don't know, um, your strategies out there and sort of like a golden rule principles that are um, sort of really not pointing the right person. They themselves fundamentally should be um, lifting their game and seeing what they can do more for their employees, so to speak. Um, so just on that, I'm a big advocate of, um, you know, personal development. Um, 
that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, anything that you can learn now that you don't have to learn later, that's going to help your team. Well, I mean, some big effort of. And just on that, I think um, the worst time to try and learn something is when you need to know it. So always be thinking three, six, 12 months in advance um, and be learning what you need to now so you don't have to when you need it. That's really sound advice. Learn what you want to learn now so that you can use it later. Is this something to do with the trees? As they say that the best time to plant a tree was yesterday or the first yeah. time. <laughs> but yeah. the best time to plant a tree is uh, right about now. Well, Nick, yeah. I can't thank you enough for your expertise and your time um, on this show today and um, you know, just giving us a glimpse of your world there at Tree Incarnation. And if you're watching this, um, video and then you really um, had you know some sort of insight as to how you can also help your team and motivate them the guys at tree incarnation are always um, you know happy to give you a hand and if you've got a tree that's been giving you a problem in your house or I mean around your house or around your offices give them a call if you are in Melbourne because they are Australia's only tree removal company that actually makes furniture from the trees that are being cut down. Nick, thank you so much for your time today. Most welcome. Thanks for the invite. Absolutely.